actually, I'd like to I'd like to read two scriptures because I'm going to compare them a little bit. And we're going to talk about kind of a history lesson of the scriptures. So here are here are the two scriptures for today. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. One of the Pharisees, an expert in the law, tested Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And the, the second scripture is Luke 10, verses 25 through 28. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? Jesus replied, how do you read it? The man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. So those are our two scriptures that we're going to start with today. Morning message will now be shared by Jane. All right. We're right into it. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Do I need to mute everyone again? Yeah, for... I would say go ahead. And then um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with your um your Zoom, but you could, if you would like to speak, because I'm, I'm actually going to be, this sermon is going to be more like in the class format, um, just the way I, I structured it, and I'll tell you why. Um, but you, you can see on your little Zoom thing that, that you can put your hand up if you would like to talk or argue with me. I am always welcome to somebody arguing with me. So in fact, as I was writing today's sermon, I realized that my sermon was more like a closing argument. And so I even wrote the words, may it please the court. And since Jerry's here, I can say that. <laughs> but it also, I also want to say, may it please the congregation. So it's a little bit of a combo closing argument sermon. Um, this lesson is all about lawyers. And the good news for me is that the lawyers in this, um, kind of get the, the lesson correct. And um, that's why I wanted to read both of those scriptures to you because in Matthew, it was the lawyer testing Jesus, but in, in Luke, it was Jesus testing the lawyer. And in each of those, they answered that the two greatest commandments are, and we all know this already, love the Lord your God with all your heart and might and soul, and mind. And then the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. Now, um, for those of you who have been in the class, we have been studying a, a lady named Amy Jill Levine, and she has really challenged us and me personally to look at scriptures in a very different way, to, to look at these two scriptures from Jesus' standpoint and the people he was speaking to when he when he when these two scriptures were actually said. You know, she calls it the first audience. And so um, what's kind of cool is that our world church guidelines also sent us to the um, or, you know the original scriptures that these two are from. And I'll read those. They are from what the Jewish people called the Torah and what we call the Old Testament. And it's a Jewish prayer called the Shema. I looked up the pronunciation, Shema. And uh, we find it in our Bible in Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 5, which states, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So that sounds familiar. And Leviticus 19, 18 says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge 
against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. So I wanted to point out to everyone that our scriptures that we all know and love, what Jesus said, is also a scripture that the Jewish people know and love. They actually call it a Shema, which is a prayer that they uh, routinely sing morning and night about loving their God. Now, I have asked Paul to read the Shema because he speaks Hebrew better than me. I have not asked him to sing it. So that's good news for Paul. But um, I would like Paul to, and, and what he's reading are the two scriptures from Deuteronomy and Leviticus that I just shared with you. So I wanted you to hear the beauty of the Hebrew version of these. So Paul, go ahead. Um, Jane, I don't actually have the one from Leviticus. I just have the Shema from uh, Deuteronomy, if that's okay. Oh, that's okay. And would you like me to read the English as well with each line or, or not? Um, why don't you read the whole thing in Hebrew Just and Hebrew. then the whole thing in English? Okay. Um, and I will tell you, uh, there's some really big Hebrew words in this prayer. Uh, and I may stumble over one or two of them because uh, my Hebrew is not that great. When a Jew says the Shema, uh, the first line of the prayer, uh, they speak cover their speak eyes. Speak a little louder. Speak a little louder for us. Is that a little better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when a Jew reads the Shema, the first line of the prayer, uh, they read with their eyes covered with their hands. And the second line uh, typically is read as a whisper or said as a whisper. So <clears throat> I may be a little quieter on the second line. And then the remainder of the prayer is, is shared in a normal tone. So uh, we'll begin with the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Elchenu Adonai Echad. Baruch Sheim Kevod Malchuto Leolam Vaed. Beahavta et Adonai. Elachecha Bechol Levavcha. Ufkol Nashecha. Ufkol Meorecha. Vehayu Hadvarim Haile Asher Anoki. Metzavcha Hayom A Levavecha. Veshinantam. Levanecha ve dibarta bam. Beshifteha be ve iteha uve leheteha. Baderek uve shahabeha. Uve humeha. Uhe shartam leot al yareha. Behayu leota fort. Bein eineha. Uve katam al mezuzot be itecha ovish arecha. And in the English again, Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall speak of them when you sit at home, when you walk along the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thank you, Paul. If um, anyone is interested in Googling the Shema, it's spelled S-H-E-M-A. And I Googled it last night, and there are so many versions of it where um, they are singing it in different ways. And in one version, they're actually singing it um, at the wall in, in Jerusalem. And it really brought home to me how the Jewish people, you know, they, they revere these scriptures. They really look at them as God is speaking to them. And, and what I love about this is that it fits right into our theme today of, of dedicated to love. And I've kind of changed the theme a little bit to say, who are we willing to love? Because that's really what these two scriptures are about. 
when Jesus is talking to the lawyers, he is saying, you know, these are the two greatest commandments. And he's also saying to the expert in the law, you already know this, you know how to read the law. And, and Deuteronomy and the, the, this Shema that we're talking about, Shema, I'm sorry, is, is actually the written law. It, it's from the Torah. And so those Jewish scholars already knew those um, laws. They just needed Jesus to explain a little bit of what these laws meant. So in, in Luke, the, um, the expert in the law goes on to ask Jesus, but who is my neighbor? And that's when the famous Good Samaritan story came up. So this is who the neighbor is. Now, once again, I'm learning to read these scriptures in terms of what they meant to the people at that time. So I wanted to set for you who these people were. First of all, these were Pharisees that who Jesus was talking to. And, and what our author, Amy, Amy Jill Levine has kind of taught us is that as Christians, we have grown up with one definition of who the Pharisees were. And, and in fact, Luke criticizes them quite a bit as, as people who um, don't listen to Jesus very well. The, the modern definition uh, when you Google it is a, a member of an ancient Jewish sect distinguished by strict observance of the written law and commonly held to have pretensions to superior sanctity. <laughs> so that's actually the definition that we all live with in 2020. So yeah, yeah, I had to go then to a Jewish site and then back to Ms. Levine's book because what, what Ms. Levine says about the Pharisees is that they were respected teachers. They were those who walked the walk as well as talked the talk. And they, um, the Pharisees had a volunteer organization that was in competition at that time with um, with the, the priestly status and the priests were the Sadducees. And so what the Jewish people believe is that the Pharisees were the spiritual fathers of modern Judaism and that they um, not only believed in the written law, which is the Torah, but they also believed in oral law, the, the telling of the stories and the explanations of the Torah. And this became um, the Talmud for them. And the, Jew, the Jewish people believe that the, the Pharisees were the early rabbis. They were kind of the precursors to the rabbis. And the reason why I tell you who these Pharisees were is because Jesus, you know, we've, we've often talked about how much Jesus was able to talk with the Pharisees because he knew the laws so well. And so everything that they're talking about the, set, the, the Pharisees and, and Jesus, they're talking about the law that's already there. So when we read Matthew and Luke now, we realize that it's already in Deuteronomy and, and Leviticus, and the Jewish people continue to, to sing this scripture every day. It's a very common scripture from what I understand. So the other part of the Good Samaritan story, and everybody knows that it, was, it wasn't the priest that, that stopped for the person on the road, and it wasn't the, um, the merchant, I think, was the second person. It was the Samaritan. And when Jesus was telling this story to the Pharisee, the, what, what Amy um, Jill Levine says is that the Pharisee would have been shocked because those, the Samaritans and the Pharisees, they weren't just, they weren't, they weren't just people that were unclean or, you know, people that, that wouldn't help, help them. They were actually their enemies. They, the Samaritans and the Jewish sect at that time, Samaritans were actually Jews too, first of all. So the, the Pharisees were in one sect, the, the, 
the Samaritans were in, in another sect. And basically this Fer the Pharisees who were li you know, listening to these stories in Jesus' time would have had the attitude of, I'd rather die than acknowledge that someone from that group could save me. That is how much their en enmity was so deep. And so Jesus's message to these people was, you have to love your enemy that much. That Samaritan was the person who saved the person in the ditch. The, the, the Pharisee who was listening to the story couldn't even say the word Samaritan when Jesus asked him, um, you know, who, who is the person saving them? And, and that the Pharisee said, oh, it's the one doing mercy for him. He couldn't even say the word Samaritan because he hated the Samaritans. And so what Jesus then said was, go and do likewise. And so what these scriptures are saying is that even though we might say in general, when we look at who is our neighbor and who should we love, we, we believe that we should have compassion for our, our enemy. But Jesus is teaching us that it, we have to go beyond compassion. This is about mercy and this is action. Mercy needs to be enacted with the body. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, go and do likewise. So of course, we're sitting here today in 2020 and all of us can think in our contentious world right now of who our enemies are. There are people that every single one of us is not willing to say that they would let that person save them. I would rather die than have that person save me or I would rather um, die than save that person. You know, and, and that's how strongly people feel about our enemies in our country right now. And the reason why I thought this was important for today was because we need to figure out, we as a church, and I'm talking about the group that's here today, we as a church need to look at each other and at our enemies in a merciful way. We need to act upon our mercy. There's a, there is an ad and it ended up on the Today Show where a Republican and a, and a Democratic governor in Utah were standing next to each other. And they said to their audience, we are, we are running against each other. We have different ways of governing but we are not enemies. These two men said to their audience, and then of course it ended up you know, going viral. And so we all got to hear it. They said, this is a time for unity. So if the Republican won, he was gonna reach across the aisle to the Democrat to maybe put him in his cabinet, just for sure reaching across the aisle to work with the Democrats. And the Democrat said the same thing. And that, got like millions and millions of hits because our country is starving for unity, in my opinion. And that's, that was the opinion. They, these guys were on the Today Show and they were shocked at how many people had watched it. But what, what the message was, it was that we don't want to be enemies. So for, for, for the whatever side of this world debate you're on, it doesn't matter because we have to listen to what Jesus was saying to that Pharisee. He was saying, you have to love your enemy so much that you can act upon it, that you can act merciful. And for us, that means we need to look across the aisle and say to the people who are across the aisle, I'm going to find something in common with you. Our church has always been good at that. Look, at, look around us. We are all diverse. We're diverse in our, in our viewpoints on religion. We are diverse in our view, 
points on politics. And we have to be the church right now. We have to say to our enemies, to our, who are our neighbors, that we are willing to reach across the aisle. And I, I really felt strongly about saying this message because Jesus started the message in, in the first century to the Jewish people who were warring with the Samaritans. I mean, they were killing each other. That's how much they hated each other. And so now here we are, and, and I am reminded by our teacher, Ms. Levine, that we, we've got to figure out what Jesus really meant by these stories. And what he meant, in my opinion, was for us to look at our enemies. And yes, that means Republicans need to look at Democrats and Democrats need to look at Republicans because there are so many times we call these people our enemies. But when I look at the people in our Zoom church, I know that we are not enemies. And so if we can't figure out a way to reach across and act merciful to our neighbors, to the people who disagree with us, to the people who we really think are wrong, then, then we're not listening to Jesus. Jesus is telling us we have to do this. We must do this. That's my message for today. I rest my case.